Hello everyone, it's me Shogo from Let's Ask Shogo. In this video, I'd like to explain to you how the samurai traditionally equip their katana on their kimono and how you can do it too. I've been training in Yaido for seven years and I actually trained in three different yuhas. I'd like to share with you all the experiences and knowledge that I have with you. So first of all, when you equip the katana into your kimono, the end of the scabbard right here comes in from the center of your body right here, so in front of your belly button. So you insert it from here, right here. And if you have a kimono on like I do, there's actually these strings of these hakamas. So one of the strings would go under the scabbard and you insert it from here, the center of the body. Now for the string, if your katana has the sagio string, by the way, there are various ways of tying this to your hakama or kimono. One of the yuha styles that I train in would tie it here onto your hakama here. There are some other schools or styles that could tie it on this side here, or there are actually some styles that wouldn't tie it at all, just keep it dangling. Now, there are some historical pictures and evidence that say that samurai actually did not tie the sagio at all, because back in the time, the samurai would actually have to often take out their katana and hand it to the owner of the building whenever they stepped indoors. So this is actually up to you. But I think the most major way is actually to tie it to your katana like this, yeah. The tying method is up to you. You could just tie it any way you like. Like this. And then the tsuba, this is the handguard of your katana, should come at the center of your body right here. And this is the right position. And your thumb must always be holding onto your handguard to prevent the katana from falling out. If you don't do this, if you just have your hand here, if you lean forward, your sword will drop and will be very, very dangerous. There's a high chance of cutting your hands. So your thumb must always be holding on to the handguard, which is at the center of your body. However, your thumb should never hold right in the middle of the top of the handguard at Tsuba, because if you do this and you try to draw the katana, there's a chance you might cut your fingers. So it's not right in the middle on the top of the Tsuba, but a little bit to the side like this to hold it properly. And again, the handguard, the center of your body. This is the basic stance you have when you have the katana in your kimono or in your belt. And I believe there are two main questions that you probably have in your mind right now. Number one is, yes, the sharp side should be upwards. This is correct. Now, there are some type of katanas that have the sharp side downwards, but those are called the hachi. Those are the more older types of Japanese katana. And those are the ones that were used on horseback. These kinds that are the most standard kinds of katana today are called the uchi katana. Uchi katana are the ones that are not worn together with armor like the tachi, but these are the one that was worn with kimono, regular clothing for the samurai. So this is correct to have the sharp side upwards like this. And second, Yes, the katana must always be on your left waist traditionally. This is because for the samurai, if you randomly had your katana on your left or right waist, when you walk past each other, there's a chance that you might bump your scabbard against each other. When you actually do that, there is a very big noise that would happen, and that could actually start a fight among the samurai. Now the story though will be completely different if you have these shorter katana called the wakizashi. The samurai during the Edo period always had these two katana with them. The shorter katana would come in from the center of your body, like we practiced earlier. Goes through under one of the strings of the kama, and the hand guards come to the center of your body. The shorter katana always comes into your kimono or belt first because the short katana, unlike the longer uchi katana, would always be with you wherever you go, even indoors. And once you have these wakizashi though, you won't be able to put your longer katana from the center of your body right. So when you have two katana, this long katana comes in from the left waist. So from this side this time, right here. And again, the sagio goes <laughs> over the scabbard like this. This is the correct way to equip two swords at once. I'd like to explain to you how to do the drawing and sheathing of the katana safely and properly. So if you're going to be drawing the katana first of all, you should have your right foot in front and it'll be a little bit uncomfortable if the katana is too close to you so you can use your left hand that is holding on to the tsuba, bring your, the sword a little bit in front of you to be more comfortable. And from here, it's really important that you never hold on to the tsuka, the handle from above like this. Because if you do this and try to draw the katana, this is what's going to be happening. You can see that the sharp edge 
is facing towards me. You don't want to slice your face in half, right? So you don't do that. It might be a little bit uncomfortable, but the hand, your hand comes from underneath the handle of the tsuka. Underneath, you'll be able to correctly face a sharp side towards your opponent, your enemy. And when you do the drawing, it's not just your right hand. If you try to use only your right hand to do the drawing, it would be like this. It'll be very uncomfortable. So it's actually your left hand drawing back the scabbard towards your waist to do the drawing. So your right hand forward, left hand back must move at the same time. So let's do this again. Right hand from underneath the handle, right hand forward, left hand back at the same time. This motion to draw the katana out. Then from here, how to sheet the katana, how to put it back. Now, you want to put it back into the scabbard here, but doing this would be very dangerous. There's a high chance of poking your fingers. So what you want to do is you want to use your left hand as a rail, a guide, to bring the katana back into the scabbard. In order to do that, you actually must cup the end of the scabbard like this completely. You're gonna be putting your katana on your hand to guide it back into the scabbard. So you have your katana in front of you. Let's try to put it back. You cup the end of the scabbard completely. You bring the back side, the dull side, the rim of the katana onto your left hand like this. You literally place the katana on your left hand. From here, you just have to bring your right hand forward and your left hand back, just like what we did when we draw the katana out. And once the entrance reaches the scabbard, you bring the scabbard to the katana, the sheath. Now, for example, if you did not cup the end of the scabbard completely, if you had it like this, there is no way your katana will properly go into the scabbard. So at first it might be a little bit scary, but this is the correct and safest way to do it because you have complete control of where your blade is going to be heading from here. You do the sheathing. Watch me do it again. Let's sheath my right hand. The position doesn't move at all like this. The height shouldn't move and you come back the first position. Then in order to learn how to properly swing the katana, you need to learn how to hold the katana properly too. So first, draw the katana out. From here, when you hold on to the katana properly, you never would hold on to the katana from the side like this, right? There's no way you can properly swing the katana like this. So it's more of holding the handle from above like this. We are often taught in marsh arts that please imagine that this is a towel, wet towel, and you try to squeeze the water out of it gently. So twist in your wrist gently like this, and you're holding the handle from above. And finally, let's move on to the swinging. You bring your hands above the top of your head, and you swing the sword down. It's very simple, but the power balance between your left and right hands are very important. When you swing the katana down, it's actually your left hand that gives the power to your sword, and your right hand is the brake that controls the katana. If you put too much power into your right hand, you lose control of your sword, so that's not good. Yeah. Use your left hand to swing, left hand swings the sword, right hand stops it at the right position. Beginners, because they're sprayed of the katana, they tend to do this, but you can't see anything if you bring your hands in front of your face. So always, whenever you bring the sword up to swing, always above the top of your head, and always have a clear eyesight of where you're going to be aiming, like this. And it's also really important when you swing this katana, imagine that you're trying to draw a big circle with the tip of your sword. This is also really important when you actually cut objects for the katana to have the right angle to cut items. So it's not this. This would be a very small circle you're trying to draw, right? So stretch your arms, relax your shoulders. You don't need that much power. Big circle. Left hand draws the big circle and right hand stops it around your waist. It's best that you keep an image that you don't want to swing down too low. There's a chance you might cut the ground. So about waist height or slightly lower is where you're aiming for. So that's where your right hand wants to stop the blade. But from here, you also want to do some angle cuts too when you do the cutting. It's not just up and down vertically all the time. So to do the angle, the basic angles, these are called kisa angles in Japanese. 
Kisa is actually a type of unique clothing that the Buddhist monks would wear. But please imagine it's about a 45 to 50 degree angle. So if you can take a look at my kimono, you can see there's these lines here, right? You can imagine that this is basically the line that you're trying to cut. And in order to make the right angle, there are some tips. So again, you have the katana in front of you like this, right? You bring the sword over the top of your head. This is the same. This time, in order to cut the right kisa, this angle, you bring your left hand over your right ear. So that would be tilting it this way. From here, you swing down to your left waist. Or you can actually imagine that there is a clock in front of you and you're trying to cut it from one to seven o'clock. You can imagine that too. One o'clock to seven o'clock. The other side, the kesa, the left kesa is the other way. Hands over the top of your head, right hand comes over your left ear, this time from 11 o'clock to five o'clock. This way, down this way. And it's really important to get these accurate swings because if you draw an inaccurate angle with these swords and hit something, you might damage your katana. I've seen many katanas that bend severely or break because of doing incorrect swings. So it's very important to practice this properly. And if you're looking for the best battle-ready katana, please check out Mini Katana.